Hey guys, coming at you today with a delicious keto pecan bar. Something I actually made for Thanksgiving this year, but it's gonna be delicious all year round. So let's get started. Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, thanks for joining me. My name's Alicia and I'm a sous chef with a sweet tooth. If you enjoy this video, please consider hitting that subscribe button down there. I got many more videos coming. I'm super excited about this month's video lineup that I'm gonna be doing. So this recipe is actually one I just found a regular old recipe online. It was by Sally's Baking Addiction. I'll put her link down in the description box below if you wanna make a non-keto version. But I used that recipe and I made it keto. So for this recipe, you're gonna need a nine by 13 pan, and you're gonna to wanna to line this with parchment paper. Now this can be a little bit tricky. There's a couple different ways you can do it. I just wanna have two handles to pull this out. So either you pull it out this way or that way, or you can make it so that you have four handles. You gotta just cut little corners into your parchment paper so that they fit down real nice into your baking pan. So I'm actually gonna do two long sides here. So I'm gonna do a little cut. I'm gonna make a little indentation where I'm gonna cut it. You can even just fold it and then give it a little cut. This does make a lot of pecan pie bars. So if you want, you can cut this in half and do just an eight by eight pan. I'm gonna give this a little bit of spray just so that it will make the parchment paper stick real good. And I also wanna spray the sides a little bit because we don't have parchment going there. Want it kinda of even, so I have enough handle on both sides. And that's our pan ready. Now I'm gonna get my brown butter going. This is a completely optional step. It just gives it a little bit more depth of flavor to the crust of this pecan pie bar. But if you wanna know how to do that, I am brown butter macadamia nut fat bomb video so you can check it out there i'm going to insert a small clip of just like your end product what it should look like we're going to set this aside and i'm going to get on to my brown butter so our brown butter is bubbling away over there it's almost to the stage we want it i just want to make sure you have your oven preheated at 350 we're going to bake off this crust before we make the filling i'm using a granular monk fruit sweetener here have that in your bowl ready to go to dump in your brown butter or if you're just using melted butter I'm using salted. If you're using unsalted, you're gonna add a pinch of salt to this. And then the only other ingredients is coconut flour and some xanthan gum and a little bit of vanilla extract. And we're gonna obviously sift our dry ingredients into our butter and sugar mixture. And I already whisked the xanthan gum into my flour a little bit because you wanna get that really evenly distributed throughout your dry ingredients and throughout your crust. I basically used a version of my shortbread cookie for my tag-along cookies. I'll link that up in the way. Not sure which side, but one of those sides. Tag-along cookies, delicious. Okay, here is our brown butter. You can see the solids at the bottom of the pan turned a nice golden brown. But we're gonna add in our vanilla to this because we don't want the vanilla not to incorporate all the way. You wanna get all the brown bits out of the bottom. And we're just gonna whisk the sugar and butter together. You want the sugar mostly dissolved in here, or at least try to. You know, our artificial sweeteners don't really like to dissolve very well. So I'm using monk fruit in this step of the process. We have to heat the filling because we're not using corn syrup as an ingredient in our pie filling, like our pecan pie filling would normally have corn syrup in it. We can't have that, so we have to actually kind of make our own little kind of corn syrup. And I'm gonna be using allulose for that step because it has the least amount of possibility of crystallizing on you. But by all means, if you have all one kind of sugar, I suggest allulose. But if you have just monk fruit, I'm sure it will turn out just fine. Might be a little bit grainy of a texture is all. So once that is mostly combined, we're gonna sift in our coconut flour and xanthan gum. This is almost too fine of a strainer, but my boyfriend used our other strainer for mac and cheese today, so it's dirty. So we just got some stuff that won't go through the sieve, but we know there's no lumps in there. Do a little whiskey whisk, but we're probably just gonna end up using our hands. We're just gonna pat it into the pie pan. And it looks really wet, and it will be a little bit more wet than a normal dough, but coconut flour soaks up 
a lot of that butter. Uh, smells delicious. The brown butter just gives it like a nutty kind of smell to it. A little bit extra flavor. As this sits, it'll get thicker too. Okay, so it's sat for a little bit and it's already thicker. I'm gonna pour this into our pan. And just spread it out. Try to get it nice and even. I'm gonna use a little offset spatula to get this nice and smooth. Okay, so this is gonna go into the oven, 350. I'm gonna set it for seven minutes. It should take about 15, but the last one I made, I did in a smaller pan, so the crust was thicker. So I'm gonna keep an eye on this. I'll turn it at seven minutes and determine how many more minutes we need. We just want it brown around the edges. That's how we know it'll be done. And it's gonna go in for another 30 and with the filling in it too. While that's baking, I am going to get everything set up for our filling. And we're gonna get it out of the oven and let it just chill out while we're getting all our filling together. Okay, our pecan pie bar crust is out of the oven. I'm gonna set this aside and talk to you a little bit about the filling we're gonna be making. So that pie crust took 15 minutes total and it still looks like it's not baked, but as soon as it cools down, it gets solid, like a shortbread base. Now the filling, the reason I picked the recipe I did was because we had the keto ingredients to sub out the regular ingredients. It called for just sugar, butter, heavy cream, maple syrup, and eggs. And of course, pecans. You can't have pecan pie without pecans. But in the regular recipe, it just says, throw everything in a pot, except for the eggs, boil it for a couple of minutes, and then temper your egg. But with keto desserts and keto sweeteners, it's always a little bit more finicky. I did a couple steps to ensure that it would come out well and wouldn't crystallize like using the allulose, which I found is the best one for not crystallizing. And then I use Locanto maple syrup, but I think you can use like any kind of sugary syrup in replacement of that. Like I have the New Naturals salted caramel syrup. I'm guessing that would work. I didn't try it, but if you don't have the maple syrup, that might be a good substitute to try. Same thing with like these, um, keto syrups here. I mean, they're very similar in ingredients. They're the same kind of thickness, you know? So I would say if you don't have the maple, just give something else a try. You can always cut it in half, like I said, that way if it doesn't turn out right, then you don't waste tons of ingredients. So let's head over to the stove. Okay, so one of the things I did to ensure that this doesn't crystallize is I made sure to melt my butter first. And then I'm gonna add my allulose into the butter so that it doesn't get any contact with just the bare metal itself. And normally I'd have all my ingredients measured out already, but I wanted to show off my new pretty measuring cups. So I'm gonna do a half cup of allulose in there. And I'm gonna boil this, just these two ingredients together until the sugar is nice and dissolved. That way we have more control over the sugar instead of just putting everything in there at once. We don't know exactly where the sugar is at the time. Let this come to a boil by itself. And then we'll add in our heavy cream and maple syrup and then temper the eggs. A few minutes later. So now that that has come up to a full boil, I'm gonna add in a half a cup of the maple syrup and two tablespoons of heavy cream. We're gonna boil that, set two to three minutes on the recipe. Pretty much just want this all to become a harmonious mixture and a nice deep brown. And then I have two eggs here that I've already beaten up. I want these pretty much room temperature to make the tempering of the really hot liquid easier than if these were ice cold. So once this has boiled for a couple of minutes, we're gonna put a half of a cup into our measuring cup here. Yeah, I'm turning the heat down a little bit because you do not want this to boil over. Okay, so I'm gonna take a half cup of outs of this mixture, put it into my measuring cup, and you let that go while you're doing this. And you slowly add in your egg while you're whisking. Make sure it's just really nice and beat up in there. It should be pretty warm. And then you're going to whisk it into the rest of the mixture. 
And that's it for our filling. I'm going to turn it off and we're going to add it into our pecans. So we have our hot mixture here. We're going to strain it just to get out any of the lumps of egg. It's very thick from the egg. Gelatinized. Our oven is still on at 350. It doesn't take too long to make the filling. We just have a little bit of the you know egg whites that tend to get stuck. But all the rest of the stuff that's just jelly gets right through. Make sure you get all your filling off stuck to your sieve. And you're just gonna mix that up. And this is three cups of chopped pecans, not roasted. Grab our pan. Our crust is pretty much cooled to the touch now. And it's just soft, is what you want. Pour over the whole mixture and spread it out. It goes all the way to the edge. Okay, there are our pecan pie bars ready to go in the oven. These are gonna bake for about 30 to 40 minutes. I'm gonna set it for 15, turn them in another 15 to make sure that they bake evenly all around the edges. Time to clean up and we'll be back when these are out of the oven. The pecan pie bars came out of the oven a while ago. They took exactly 30 minutes and I let them cool at room temperature for about an hour and I popped them into the freezer because I couldn't wait very long to finish this video and try these guys. I probably should wait a little bit longer, but I'm too impatient. So we're going to be grabbing them out of the freezer. Not waiting may make this end in disaster, but we're going to try it anyways. <laughs> I'm going to take a little offset spatula and release these edges. Okay, they are still a little bit soft, so we'll see what happens here. I'm going to grab both edges and slowly start releasing them. They came out good. Let's try this side. Yep, they good. Let's see. Oh, ripped. Definitely should cool all the way. Now if we cut these into 24 pieces. They're 2.6 grams of net carbs for each piece. So to do that, we're gonna cut in half. Again, wait until yours is completely cool. Do as I say, not as I do. And then we're gonna do into thirds. So kind of eyeball that. Oh. See, because it's not cool enough, the filling and crust have not solidified together yet. So it's always important to cool your stuff completely before you cut into it. Okay, so that's six. We'll cut in half and in half one more time. Not super pretty, but I'm sure they'll taste delicious. Those are our pecan pie bars. This would be better if it was chilled all the way, but we got to give it a try, right? Mmm. So this crust isn't super crunchy like my tagalong cookies because that's what I wanted for the tagalong cookies was a nice crunchy cookie. But for this, I want kind of a softer shortbread kind of crust and just taking out that little bit of egg white protein made this crust nice and soft. Mm. It is delicious. I'm excited to have another 24 of these laying around. <laughs> these are delicious all by themselves, but if you're feeling really ambitious, make some of my keto vanilla ice cream and put that on top or some keto caramel sauce or if you have just the chalk zero caramel sauce it would be delicious on this because it's not a super sweet recipe which I know I'm known for very sweet recipes so if you want to add a little bit more sweetness to it go right ahead and add a little bit more to the filling recipe part of this or you can do some sweetened whipped cream some caramel sauce some ice cream anything you'd like on top. I hope you guys try this recipe at home. If you do, let me know in the comments below how it turned out for you, how your family enjoyed it. If you enjoyed this video, please consider hitting that subscribe button down there, hitting the thumbs up, leave some comments and let me know what you think. And I'll be back with many more keto dessert recipes. Bye guys. Mm -hmm.